Hey guys, Omni here. Earlier today, Netflix released a series of trailers, some for existing shows, some for new and upcoming. And we're going to be checking out some of these new show teasers that we have coming out. Now we got some teasers, we got some trailers, we got a little bit of a mix. There's a five different ones that I wanted to look at in particular that I want to check out because they are brand new. They are ones that I've actually been keeping an eye on as opposed to some of the shows that are pre-existing because we got some trailers for new seasons of already existing shows on the platform and uh, most of which I'm not caught up on. So no sense in watching the trailers for seasons that I'm not at. So let's go ahead and I want to start off with the Wednesday Adams reveal. So let's go ahead and kick this one off. Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> Dude, Jenna Ortega. Oh, thing looks good. Tim Burton. I didn't realize Tim Burton was attached to it, man. All right, a little small taste. The the look they got down pat, and Jenna looks. I mean, she's pulling it off, man. I'm curious though, how how are they setting it about just around Wednesday? Um, does it have a synopsis yet? No, it does not. Oh, no, it does. Here we go. Um, looks like from the imagination of Tim Burton comes Wednesday, a twisted new series coming soon to Netflix. Wednesday, starring Jenna Ortega in the title role, alongside Catherine Zeta-Jones, Louise Guzman, Gwendolyn Christie, Christina Ricci, oh my God, and more is a sleuthing, supernaturally infused mystery charting Wednesday Adam's years as a student at Nevermore Academy. Snap, snap. Ooh, that sounds intriguing. Oh, okay. All right, you have me. You have me hooked on it. Let's do it. Let's see what the full trailer brings when that comes out. But um, Jen Ortega, man, she's, uh, she's somebody to keep an eye on. She's got so many phenomenal roles already, and... She's just like uh, striking out her own little horror path here. Um, she'll be in the upcoming Scream 6, kind of uh, carrying on her role from Scream 5. And then she was in X, and now this. Uh, she's kind of carving out a little bit of the market for herself. New Scream Queen, I would say. We'll see. Keep an eye on that one, man. For real. Let's go ahead and uh, move on over. We got a show coming from Guillermo del Toro, Cabinet of Curiosities. We got an official teaser for this one. Now this one, I don't really know what it's about. I just know that Guillermo del Toro is attached and that's usually enough for me. So let's go ahead and give it a look. Experience new worlds. Hmm. Is this an anthology? Oh, I guess it's an anthology series. Dude. Andrew Lincoln, Ben Barnes, Crispin Glover. Rupert Grant. Damn. Those are just the names that I'm aware of. I'm sure maybe if I saw like the face, I could put the name to it, but okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what this one has here. Maestro of Horror, Guillermo del Toro presents a blood curdling tales of horror. This anthology of sinister stories is told by some of today's most revered horror creators, including the directors of the Babadook, Splice, Mandy, and many more. All right, man, sign me up. Now, I will go ahead and say that I don't know if these will be reaction series, but these are definitely shows that are going to be on my radar for certain. So, that being said, let's move on to the next one. Now, this one, definitely looking forward to. Now, I haven't posted it as of yet, but I've started, uh, I've at least recorded the first episode of Midnight Mass, which is Mike Flanagan, and this is another Mike Flanagan show that is coming our way, The Midnight Club. 
And hopefully I'll be caught up on that by the time this comes out and maybe we can jump right into this because right now I'm, I'm a huge fan of his work. You know, I, I dove into it for Halloween, starting with The Haunting of Hill House. I have since finished Bly Manor. I've seen a lot of his movies, but I hadn't seen any of his series. So Midnight Club seems to be the next one in the line. And he's also doing an adaptation of The Fall of the House of Usher uh, based on the Edgar Allan Poe poem. So I'm curious, man, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a great in the field, I would say. So definitely by name alone, this show has my attention. So let's check it out. To those before. To those after. To us now. And to those beyond. Ooh. Seen. Or unseen. Here. But not here. Seen or unseen. Here, but not here. Oh, what was that? <laughs> All right. Now that was a tease for sure. All right. October 7th. Ooh, spooky month. All right. Just in time for that. So I, we got plenty of time. I'll definitely be done with Midnight Mass before then. All right. Let's read this one. What's this one about? Um, To those before, to those after, to us now, to those beyond, seen or unseen, here, but not here. At the manor with a mysterious history, the eight members of the Midnight Club meet each night at midnight to tell sinister stories and to look for signs of the supernatural from the beyond based on our uh, on the beloved uh, Christopher Pike book series and brought to life by the creators of The Haunting of Hill House. Okay. Interesting. So it's a bunch of people kind of coming out and meeting at midnight and telling some spooky stories. Trying to get in touch with the beyond in some sense or fashion. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Now this one. We got a teaser trailer for it. I reacted to, I think, one of them. I can't remember if I reacted to both of them, but Netflix's Resident Evil series that is coming out, which uh, already has a mixed reception, as one can expect in the, in the ether. I'm optimistic, at least, especially, or at least intrigued, based on the premise, since they are saying this is part of the canon of the game universe itself, and that is their goal, is to keep it tied into that, but that begs a lot of questions, and I'm wondering how they will answer those. That also kind of sets us in a trap for the games, I would say, with this post-apocalyptic world that we see, and the glimpses of the teaser trailer, so... I don't know. Might be some marketing... Uh, slang they're throwing around to try to get us uh, invested, but we'll see. Let's see what the actual trailer trailer has to offer. Here we go. They said the world would end in 2036. But they Ooh. were wrong. The world ended a long time ago. Umbrella, a company besieged by a scandal is now trying to reinvent itself. The old umbrella made mistakes. <laughs> the things we're working on today, they're gonna change the world. We're just gonna make all new mistakes or just the exact same ones, who knows? Oh my God, <laughs> that was a giant fucking worm. The drug contains the T-virus. Virus can make monsters. Billions will die. Everyone keep your mouth shut. Oh. Liquor looks better than the movie, Liquor. Is 
complicated. Oh. Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> Interesting. We got a lot of more creatures in this one. Giant spiders, giant worms. It's looking a little more like Resident Evil the more we see of it. The liquor, though, looks pretty good. The zombies also look pretty good. It's just like, once we get to the big, large-scale zombie apocalypse part of the story, like, I'm a little, like, I'm a little concerned about that bit, especially with them, like I mentioned earlier, like, wanting to put this in the canon somehow. Because that, if so, that is going to box in the games. So, I, 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 Capcom will override this no matter what with the games. I, I, regardless, I feel like. So, even if this was presented as such, I'm sure they'd be like, nah, if we want to do something, it'll just not exist. I'm just really curious to see what's going on because it seems like it's Blue Umbrella, or at least that's the idea of it. You know, the rebranded, restructured Umbrella who's trying to like reinvent themselves and come back from the brink of destruction from their tarnished name after the events of Raccoon City and various other travesties that they were involved in. And then they're just like, what? Let's release this drug into the world that has the T-Virus into it knowingly? <laughs> what? I'm confused as to where that's going to go and how the Wesker uh, family is going to fit into it as, in the long run. But I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a go. And we'll see. You know, who knows? It could change my mind. It could win me over. But I feel like this would be one of those things that might benefit from just have been it, like being a standalone thing. And maybe this was originally, and they were like, let's put the Resident Evil name on it uh, so we can market this, kind of like a uh, Cloverfield Paradox situation. But I don't want to, I don't want to be too negative because I feel like they're getting some of it right. But I'm just like, as far as the story goes, I'm, 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 I'm cautiously optimistic. I would say, I would say. But guys, the cherry on top, the one I wanted to hold off on till the end, is our date announcement trailer for The Sandman. Now, this is a renowned graphic novel world over. And I know next to nothing about it. But since this was shown off, since this was announced, and the creator heavily involved like heavily involved in the show i i'm intrigued like it seems like this might be something where you know i could go into it and finally maybe experience this tale in a way that i can be kind of like really invested into that's the hope at least um and the cast so far that's filled out for it great everything i've seen of it so far sounds intriguing but guys Let's see what this trailer looks like. Here we go. Ooh. I'm the king of dreams. Ruler of the nightmare realm. What are you doing, Dude. Yeti? He's coming, isn't he? Yo! Morpheus. The Anira Mansa. You know the Sandman. He's a fairy story, Yeti. He's no fairy story. He's back. Good to know. Put the guy in his hands! Open your hands now! <laughs> Dude, this looks wild. Forgive me, sire. Whoa! Please. Whoa! They are not as you left them. With you gone, the realm began to decay and crumble. Dreams and nightmares no longer seem to recognize their monster. I will remind them. He's free. He's out of his cage. August 5th. Dude, that looks wild. I like the imagery. Like I said, I really don't know anything about this world. 
like whatsoever. But just from this little premise, man, I am I'm really curious, especially with the the scope and the scale. Like I didn't expect like this type of imagery from just from passing knowledge of it, you know. I I really didn't know what I kind of expected like maybe something more like good omens along that line. You know, something a little more grounded, like, you know, it's got that mystical element to it, that fantastical nature to it, but a little more grounded. Um, nah, man, this looks like it's going to be going big. I don't know, man. How do you, uh, hardcore Sandman fans feel about it? Um, I can tell you just from a layman's perspective, at least, I am really intrigued. It's got that gothic nature to it that I really am drawn towards and looks like it's pulling on lots of different mythologies as well yeah man i'm looking forward to it everything like i've said everything i've heard about it and read about it so far has got me pretty intrigued and jenna coleman pulling up there i was like hell yes nice dude anyway guys that's our little roundup what did you guys think of the trailers? Which one sounds, which one stood out the most to you? Which one are you looking forward to the most? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that and all my socials are down below. Before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherrett, Ryan Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yori Koryskov, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Cal Kestis Nation. Thank you guys so much. For your support as always and that's it for this one guys i'll see you all in the next video take care everybody